Hello and welcome to the second chapter in operations management. In the first chapter, we discussed the introduction into the discipline of operations management and some fundamental ideas and concepts relevant to the field. We discussed about the strategic decisions that firms and operations managers have to make in order to succeed in the marketplace. This second chapter in the series is aimed at delivering an in-depth understanding and analysis of the first strategic decision that was discussed in the first chapter. Yes, we will learn about product and service design in this chapter. We will break down the variables that this decision is made up of and how best operations managers may or should go about in making these decisions. If you are lost, it will do you a great deal of good to check out the first chapter on operations management. The link is in the description below. Anyway, before we start, kindly hit the subscribe button in order to be among the first people who will get notified when the next chapter in the series is uploaded. Thank you very much. So to begin our lessons, let's talk about the meaning of design strategy. Design strategy is a plan of action that applies the principles of design thinking to the structure of a business strategy to meet user needs in a way that ultimately improves a business. Furthermore, product design is about creating physical or digital solutions with specific features, while service design is about ensuring customers have great experience and value. Both types of design require people who are good at solving problems and knowing what the customers want. The purpose behind a design strategy is to ensure that the product or service being offered to the marketplace has high performance evaluation. In simpler words, the aim is to ensure that the product satisfies the wants and needs of the customer. But what exactly defines a product that satisfies a customer? Since this is quite vague, let's be more specific. A product or service performs well when it meets the firm's operations performance objectives. So, for products and services to perform well, they must meet the following objectives. Quality, speed, dependability, flexibility, and cost. In a nutshell, operations managers seek to create products that are quality, flexible, dependable, and are produced with speed in a way that is very efficient or with minimal cost. As well, quality, flexibility, and dependability are essential factors in the service sector. A very important question that may be on your mind is, what are the factors or variables that consist a design strategy? To answer the question, we will include variables such as cost, quality, time to market, customer satisfaction, and competitive advantage. This is to say that when operations managers make a design strategy for their firm's products or services, they are seeking to design a product which has the lowest possible cost but high quality. They also seek to design a product which will enable the firm to satisfy customers and also to give the firm an edge over its variables in the market. In commerce, time to market is the length of time it takes from a product being conceived until it's being available for sale meaning the time it takes to think of the product to the time it takes to send it to the market for sale. Product or service design should be closely tied to an organization's strategy and must also take into account the capabilities of the organization in designing goods and services. At this point, a question that comes to mind is what are the objectives of product and service design strategies? From all this, it can be concluded that the main objective of a product and service design is to deliver customer satisfaction and a product and service design does this by focusing on the function of product or service, the cost incurred or the profits to be earned, the quality of the product, the appearance, the ease of production, the ease of maintenance. Right. So the main goal or the main objective of the product and service design strategy is to satisfy the needs of customers. And that is done through these sub objectives. Moving on, let's look at the reason for product and service design strategy. Right, what are the reasons why a firm should design their products and services? 
all of this seems like an awful lot of trouble to go through just to satisfy your customers, doesn't it? The reasons why operations managers make products and service is to satisfy their customers' needs and wants. However, that is not the only reason. You see, in a broader sense, there is more than one reason as to why it is necessary for a firm to go through all these hurdles. And this is because having a product or service design will help the firm in the following ways. It will help the firm produce a product that is economic and profitable. It will ensure that the product or service will fit its market socially and demographically. That is to say that the age groups and the beliefs of the people who fit the products or services being offered. The product and service design will also help the firm navigate its way through political and legal pressures and consequences. Because when product and service designs are being formed, they take into consideration the political state, state of the nation, the legal pressures, and they try their best to come up with a design that does not cross the lines of any of these forces. So they won't have to face those consequences. Now, the product and service design will also give the firm a competitive edge over their rivals. And lastly, it will help the firm leverage on technological advancements as well. Having talked about this, let's look at the activities of the product and service design strategy. Still to come in this chapter, we will further take a look at product and service design individually. But before then, let's gain understanding from a general stance the activities that make up a product and a service strategy. Generally speaking, for a firm to offer a product or service that satisfies the needs and wants of its target market, the firm must translate customer wants and needs into product and service requirements. They would have to refine existing products and services also to develop new products and services. Then quality goals would have to be formulated and then the cost target would also have to be formulated. From there, the firm would have to construct and test prototypes and seven document specifications. This is the general idea of what goes on when designing a product or service strategy. Up next, let's talk about product design. In order to understand what product design is all about, let's first have a look at the product development process. Now, the product development process follows the following steps idea generation, feasibility analysis, product specifications, process specifications, prototype development, design review, market test, product introduction, and lastly, follow up evaluation. Now, from this, you realize that the product design is only a phase in the process of developing a product. And before you think about designing a product, you must first generate ideas for your product. Before we talk more about product design, let's talk about how ideas for a product may be generated. It is imperative to first consider the following sources of idea generation. A firm may generate ideas from one of these three sources. One, the firm's supply chain. Two, its competitors. And lastly, three through research a firm may draw ideas from other sources but in the context of this series the sources are limited to these three now let's talk about the ways or how a firm may generate product ideas from this basis first we have reverse engineering in the context of operations management reverse engineering is a process of dismantling and investigating a product to discover the concepts involved in its fabrication with the goal of producing a similar product or improving upon an existing one. A firm may reverse engineer their competitor's product to discover ideas for new products or to improve existing products. 2. Research and development. This involves organized efforts to increase scientific knowledge or product innovation and may involve basic research, which advances knowledge about a subject without seeking to introduce a new product into the market to sell. Also, with there is applied research on the other hand, and this achieves commercial applications. So, it takes a step further from basic research and it not only advances knowledge but seeks to come up with a product that can be sent to the market for sale. Now, in the context of research, development occurs when the results of applied research are converted into commercial applications. Having said this, let's get back to product design. 
there are various methods or ways that a firm may choose to go about their product design. Let's have a look at some of those design methods. 1. Robust Design This refers to designing your products in a way that results in the ability of your product to function over a broad range of conditions. This method of design can also be applied to services. 2. Concurrent Engineering Concurrent engineering, also known as simultaneous engineering, is a method of designing and developing products in which the different stages run simultaneously rather than consecutively. This decreases product development time and also the time to market, leading to improved productivity and reduced cost. This is because all the stages of production are being undertaken at the same time. 3. Computer Aided Design Computer Aided Design CAD, or CAD is a product design using computer graphics. It increases productivity of designers about 3 to 10 times and creates a database for manufacturing information on product specifications. 4. Manufacturability Now, design for manufacturability is a general engineering practice of designing products in such a way that they are easy to manufacture. These methods reduce cost and improve productivity and quality. 5. Modular Design Modular design is a form of standardization in which components are subdivided into modules that are easily replaced or interchanged. It allows easier diagnosis and remedy of failures. Also, it allows easier repair and replacement and it allows for simplification of manufacturing and assembly. On this point, let's talk about standardization. What is it? Standardization is the process of making your products and services consistent and uniform across your organization. It involves defining and following clear specifications, guidelines, and procedures for how you design, produce, deliver, and support your offerings. Standardization brings a lot of benefits to the firm, such as fewer parts to deal with in inventory and manufacturing. It also brings design costs lower and also brings reduced training costs and time for employees. More routine purchasing, handling and inspection procedures are available in standardization. However, standardization has serious downsides such as 1. Standardized designs may have too many imperfections remaining. 2. High cost of design changes increases resistance to improvement. This is to say that once a product design has been standardized, it becomes very difficult to make changes to it, hence improvements are impeded. 3. The thickest variety standardization brings to a product results in less consumer appeal. The good thing is that there is a way to effectively mitigate the disadvantages of standardization. I am talking about mass customization. This is a strategy of producing standardized goods or services, but incorporating some degree of customization. This can be done in two ways. One, delayed differentiation and two, modular design. Now we already talked about modular design, so let's talk about the delayed differentiation now. Delayed differentiation is a postponement tactic which involves producing but not quite completing a product or service until customer preferences or specifications are known. For example, when you go to buy a pizza, the dough has already been prepared and made ready. When you make your order, then the final specifications or let's say ingredients are included and then your order will be fulfilled. That's an instance of mass customization in the form of delayed differentiation. That's enough on product design. Let's talk about service design. Up next. Service is something that is done to or for a customer. Service delivery systems refer to the facilities, processes, and skills needed to provide a service. The phases in service design include 1. Conceptualize or generate an idea of what service you are going to offer. 2. Identify service package components, the physical resources you need to perform it. Right, so the service package components refers to the physical resources needed to perform a service. The next is to determine the performance specifications and translate the performance specifications into design specifications 
and lastly translate design specifications into delivery specifications when talking about service design it is important to mention service blueprinting service blueprinting is a method used in service design to describe and analyze a proposed service it is a useful tool for conceptualizing a service delivery system these are the steps in service blueprinting one to establish boundaries two identify the steps involved three prepare a flowchart four identify potential failure points and five establish a time frame lastly analyze profitability now let's discuss some of the challenges involved in offering services one variable requirements services often face variable requirements because they are intangible and depend on various factors such as customer preferences timing and specific circumstances two difficult to describe unlike physical products which can be easily showcased and described services are intangible and may involve complex processes or experiences that are difficult to convey through traditional means three high customer contact many services involve high level of interaction between service providers and customers while this can lead to personalized experiences and stronger relationships it also increases the, com the complexity of managing customer interactions now before we bring this chapter to a close let's talk about a few more things relevant in product and service design strategy one quality function deployment qfd this is a structured approach used in product and service development to ensure that customer needs and requirements are translated effectively into design and product specifications it originated in japan in the 1960s and has since been widely used across various industries globally the primary goal of qfd is to systematically capture and prioritize customer requirements and then align them into appropriate design features and production processes also we will talk about reliability the ability of a product part or system to perform its intended function under a prescribed set of conditions when a product part or system does not perform as intended it is classified as a failure that's a wrap for chapter 2 i hope you found it helpful please do subscribe and i'll see you in the next chapter